On Monday, November 22nd, in a special one-day session, Vermont's legislature passed a statute that allows local municipalities to enact, or choose not to enact, local ordinances that require face masks to be worn while people are in indoor locations, and thus at higher risk for contracting the COVID-19 virus. This action came against the background of Governor Phil Scott's objection to a statewide mandate, so the middle ground became allowing individual towns to adopt temporary restrictions if they chose to do so. Since then, several towns have enacted such ordinances to varying degrees. In some of the communities, the actions taken are simply recommendations, not requirements. Brattleboro, Burlington, Manchester, Montpelier, Rutland Town, Waitsfield, Warren, Wilmington, and Winooski are among them, joined earlier this week by Bennington. With COVID cases surging over the past few weeks, the conversation about whether it made sense to impose mandates, and if so, to what extent, has reached the Northshire towns as well. At its select board meeting on Monday, December 7th, the Arlington Select Board voted to require masks when people are in the town hall or by employees in town vehicles. However, this action was considered to be simply a reinforcement of the existing policy that was already in place. We spoke with Arlington Town Administrator Nick Zayas by Zoom a few days after the Select Board meeting. The Select Board landed on it, a policy that applies specifically and only to town buildings and town staff on official business. So the board enacted a, a staff and buildings face mask policy and that does not take up the authority granted to municipalities by SB1 Act 1 and instead uses our existing authority to regulate town staff and buildings and, and as such these can be seen as simply building rules and work rules that the select board has implemented for the such that they could be a little bit more adaptable than the ordinance policy that's prescribed in SB1 Act 1. The following night, Manchester Select Board also voted to impose some requirements for face masks, but allowed private businesses to opt in or opt out. Business owners who opt to require face masks on their premises will be supported by the town, but they aren't required to impose a face mask rule. Businesses will have to register with the town, saying they will have a face mask requirement, and the town will provide an official sign to that effect. A list of businesses requiring face masks will be posted on the town's website. One such business was Manchester Hot Glass, and we had a chance to talk to owner Andrew Weil as to how the reaction of his customers was going. You know, for the most part, people are very good about it. We definitely get some people in here that are, oh, I'm not wearing a mask, whatever, you know, I'm vaccinated. And, you know, we address it as gently as we can, but uh, it'd be nice if people could read the signs and just respect the business's wishes. We're all just trying to stay healthy. The face mask rule has been controversial and prompted some debate, both pro and con. At the Arlington Select Board meeting, businessman Andy Curtis said it was an issue of free will. I, for one, am a firm believer of free will, as are the majority of people I've met over my course of my life and people in this town. Forcing someone to wear a mask to appease the emotions of others is taking their ability to act on their own discretion. I say this as an individual level and at a business level. Local business is already constrained by a lack of labor, lost revenues, and the supply chain holdups, mostly because of government mandates. And this is only going to increase that. Right after Curtis spoke at the Arlington Select Board meeting, Helen Engel spoke to the opposite side of the question via a Zoom connection to the Select Board. Um, I feel like when I come to Arlington and I go into a store, um, I really can't tell um, who's been vaccinated and who hasn't because there are people that aren't wearing masks and people that have said to me, I haven't been vaccinated, but I don't tell them that, you know, kind of thing. Um, and, um, you know, I, I am for, for free will and I do agree with the gentleman that, that spoke before, but when that free will imposes on other people a risk. It's no longer a free will. It is now a public health crisis, and it is an imposition on, on, on my free will. 
About a week after the Arlington Select Board meeting, where Mr. Curtis spoke, we had a chance to talk to him again via a Zoom call. Sir, I don't, to clear the record, I don't have a problem with masks. I, and I've, I've worn them. I've done everything that's been asked through the CDC, through local governments, towns, state, federal, the whole nine yards. What I have a problem with is when they said forced. And that's, to me, is when you're drawing the line. It's, you're not, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I walk the line on in this town, and there's two sides of this town. There's two sides of every town. And I kind of walk the middle, and I get, you know, I grew up, let's say I grew up on the other side of the tracks. So when I get responses from people from the other side that don't technically won't speak up, and they, they hear something like force, they take it into a context that that's aggression. And to me, if you're going to force anything upon anybody, that's that's imposing your will on the mind. And that's where I was at with it. You know, as far as like the, and I believe the town pretty much already had their minds made up before I even did the presentation. They weren't going to pass it because in number one, it's unenforceable. And, and two, I don't, I, I'm pretty sure they didn't really agree with it anyways, because how do you do it? You're trying to, what they're trying to do is, is appease the emotions of other people. And I get it. You know, you have an opinion, I have an opinion, but at the same time, I've done everything we're supposed to do. My family has, my friends have, the people I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for have. And we're going on the third winter with COVID, and here we are, we're back to howling about masks again. You know, there's, there's enough restrictions going on, government-mandated restrictions right now with everything. And the biggest thing is with business. I mean, I'm in construction, and the, the supply chain is, is completely dis, dismembered. Uh, we're waiting on stuff six, eight weeks out the road. People aren't getting bids in. How do you even bid stuff? You know, it's like all this infrastructure money is coming out. What do you even do with it if you don't have the manpower of the supply chain to, to, to do the work with? And I believe with a mask mandate, you're going to make that even more. You're going to just tighten that noose just a little bit more. And you're already, and if you do it and you tell businesses that, hey, you have to enforce this mask mandate, they already have lost revenue. They already have a labor shortage. They already have supply or supply chain issues. So why keep tightening that news? The Manchester Select Board meeting also featured some back and forth over the issue, as public safety and individual choice were not aligned. Afterwards, we spoke with Town Manager John O'Keefe by Zoom. You know, an opt-in. I call it an opt-in face mask rule um, that the board put in place. Um, you know, I think they wanted to support the businesses that um, wanted to have a fa fa uh, face mask uh, mandate. Uh, at the same time, you know, we did hear from some businesses and we know of many businesses that, that don't want to deal with it. And I think that if those businesses aren't going to actually require a face mask, it, it does seem like it's, it's going to have a, um, uh, there's going to be a lot of mixed messages out there. If you go into one business and they're enforcing a face mask mandate and another one doesn't, um, it does seem like it'll undermine the actual effort. Um, I should say that, you know, everything points to the fact that, you know, I appreciate what the legislature did and the governor, but passing it down to municipalities, you know, when some of our municipalities are very small, um, being able to drive just a couple miles to evade the face mask um, rule seems like it's not really, it's not really a public health, it's not really a um, um, solid public health strategy. We then turned to Dr. Trey Dobson of the Southwestern Vermont Medical Center to hear about the effectiveness of face masks in helping to dampen the spread of COVID. Why are face masks important? Are, are they effective? And they do they actually, do we know, is the, the data there that they actually do help to minimize the spread of, of COVID? Absolutely. I mean, it is a great question. Um, I thought we had answered it a long time ago, but clearly it still causes a lot of confusion. This is a respiratory spread virus. It is spread through droplets that when you speak or when you breathe out, uh, it hangs onto the droplets and then affects another person. And that's very clearly demonstrated. It's also very clearly demonstrated that indoors, it can be highly infectious, uh, depending on the proximity one is to another individual who is infectious and also the time that they spend together. Outdoors, uh, you know, at a, at a short distance away, it was very rare that the virus would spread. Uh, so we can drop our masks if we are 
in a uh, good distance away outdoors, just not crowded, you know, bumping into one another. And we should, I think that's very important so that we have time away from our masks. But when we're indoors, whether you're vaccinated or not, uh, the virus spreads, you know, fairly uh, easily uh, without masks on. And wearing masks is not 100% preventative, but along with vaccination and wearing masks indoors, uh, the chances of transmission are much reduced. On Monday, December 13th, the Bennington Select Board voted unanimously to issue a recommendation, rather than a mandate, that face masks be worn in all indoor public spaces, like stores and restaurants, and that business owners should encourage patrons and staff to mask up while inside. Difficulties around enforcing a mandate were cited by Select Board members. If COVID numbers continue to remain high in Vermont as the holiday season swings into full gear, This is a debate that may not fade quickly. The initial ordinances allowed under the legislative action expire after 45 days, and select boards then have the option of renewing them in 30-day increments. For the GNAT-TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.